Um, so we'd like actually um, for the next uh, hour and a half uh, to really uh, enjoy great speakers. Uh, we have uh, also a panel um, uh, toward the end of the session about uh, the convergence between biotech, life science, and food. Actually, we don't think about it much as when we think biotech, life science, usually the connotation is uh, uh, biomedical, but the food system is a, a great uh, um, user of uh, biotech and life science. And biotechnology has been actually the oldest technology in food. Wine is produced by fermentation, which is a biotech process, as you know, for thousands of years. Same with beer, with uh, bread, uh, with the uh, fermentation of yeast, with cheese. And actually, in the last uh, decades, we've seen um, uh, an uh, expansion of the applications of uh, biotech in agriculture and food with uh, genetically modified organisms. Today, most of the soy of the corn grown in, um, in the US is uh, uh, genetically engineered, uh, but also applications of uh, uh, the microbiome and the convergence between medicine and, uh, and food and food as a medicine. We've seen um, a lot of uh, um, uh, applications of uh, uh, health and antibiotics, for instance, and antibiotic replacement in, in animal uh, production. A lot of focus on soy, uh, soy, soil uh, health, sorry. And actually, what we'd like to uh, um, expand a bit more this afternoon is the convergence between cell biology, biology in general, and, uh, and food. And we have actually um, uh, great uh, speakers which, which can uh, uh, um, share with you their views about how to expand existing technologies developed for biomedical applications into uh, making food better. And, and the, the point here is not only that the food sector is a huge market. For instance, um, if we talk about uh, uh, cultivated meat, which is a, a topic which I'm uh, dealing with, the market for animal proteins is a $1.8 trillion market. Um, I think th there aren't a lot of markets which are that large. Um, and this huge market is ripe for disruption. Uh, the food system today is uh, in a deep need of uh, transformation, both from the sustainability, sustainability front. Today, uh, we lost 30% uh, of our arable land in the last uh, 50 years because of intensive agricultural practices, which, which we, need, we need to change with different uh, systems for food production. The uh, cattle production, livestock, is responsible for close to 15% of our greenhouse gases emitted every year. And we need to uh, rethink the way we um, uh, produce and consume animal products in order to make sure that we can mitigate climate change and get back into our, our planetary boundaries. So a lot of opportunities, huge market, Let's explore how biomedical um, uh, uh, based uh, biotechnology could be pivoted and directed uh, toward food. I'm uh, uh, honored to invite the, our first speaker, Professor Shulamit uh, Levenberg, who is uh, director of the Stem Cell and Tissue Engineering Labo Laboratory at the Technion's Faculty of Biomedical Engineering and the director of the Technion Center for 3D Bioprinting at the, at the Technion as well, and also one of the co-founders of uh, Aleph Arms. Shulamit, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much, and I would like to, to take you through the, the journey that we did um, from a regenerative medicine to food application. And when we're talking about um, this uh, transfer, uh, transfer of uh, knowledge from the lab to the uh, industry. So I just want to mention the three companies that came out from the lab. And I will talk about a little bit about Alifarm at the end of the talk. But uh, uh, there are other two companies that I will not have time to discuss uh, today. So when we're talking about uh, tissue engineering, um, the need actually emerged from the need for um, tissues and organs for implantation for to regenerate uh, the tissues after injury, and we know that there is a need and how we can solve it, we can try to engineer the tissue uh, in the lab, and for doing this, we really need also vascularization. We need to make sure that we have the, the nutrient and oxygen that can reach 
as a tissue, and I will talk ab about how we can solve this problem, because without tackling this issue, we will not be able to engineer large tissue. So just for the concept of tissue engineering, we can take uh, cells, the different cells of the tissue, we can take more than one cell type, and then we can mix them together. And for example, if we're talking about muscle tissue, we can take the myoblast, we can take the endothelial cells, we can take support cells, and after finding the right uh, cell ratios and uh, medium composition, we can then load them onto the scaffold, the 3D matrix that can be also biodegradable. The cells can go into the pores of the scaffold and start to organize themselves, to proliferate and migrate and organize themselves. And uh, we were able to show that if we add endothelial cells, they can self-assemble into the uh, vasculature, they can form the tubes, and they can elongate and they can anastomose and actually form the network uh, of vessels. And by this, we can really create this uh, vasculature that, that can help us also uh, in vivo after implantation. And if we add support cells, some of them can differentiate to a pericyte or smooth muscle-like cells and be recruited to the vessel wall and stabilize the vessels. And eventually we can get the, the cells of the tissue to differentiate. Here we can see the, the myoblast and then we can get the vascularized tissue. So under the microscope, we can really see these uh, processes. So here I'm just showing you the endothelial cells forming the, the vasculature. They are really forming the vessels, so it's not only the animation, so you can really see it. Uh, the endothelial cells are labeled in red, and everything here is filled with the other cells, with the muscle cells, for example, and the endothelial cells are finding their way and forming uh, the vasculature. So after we have the engineered tissue, it can be vascularized, uh, we can now use it for implantation, and this is just another example that we can take a muscle tissue and use it to replace a piece of the abdominal wall um, of the mice, and here's the engineered tissue. It can be pre-vascularized with all these green engineered vessels, and then we were able to show that this uh, tissue can really call the host cells to get into the implant, and specifically the, the vessels will recruit the host vasculature and will have connection, and we have different type of, of connection, and eventually, because of this anastomosis, we can get some of the engineered vessels to become uh, functional, and blood will start to flow through them and will reach faster to the deeper area uh, of the construct. And by this, we can really feed the implant, which is really very critical. So just to show you that it's not only animation, so under the microscope we can see the implant, we can see the engineered vessels, and we can also see the host vasculature that is now getting into the implant in blue. And in higher magnification, one can really see the, connect the connection between the engineered vessels and the host. And uh, if we inject something into the, into the blood to follow and see whether the engineered vessels are really perfused, so you can see here the red dye that is really reaching into the green engineered vessel, meaning that we really get connection and helping to vascularize the tissue. So during the, year, we, the years, we really used uh, different models to show that this engineered tissue can be integrated. Um, but in all of these models, uh, we have to wait for the host to send the vessels in. And we said maybe we can now go one step further and really go develop a technique that will allow us to engineer larger tissue construct. And by this, we thought we, we don't want to rely only on the self-assembly of the cells and formation of the capillaries. We also want to, is it also a microphone? I don't have this one, thanks. So uh, we can have the, the small capillary structure and also we can now uh, maybe engineer the large vessels. And by this, we can connect them directly to the vasculature and immediately after implantation, we'll get blood flowing into, into the implant. So the concept was now to engineer the large tube as well. Sorry, it's jumping in. The large tube and around it to have the tissue. And the, the hypothesis was that we can induce sprout coming from the large tube and connect to this small capillary structure uh, that, uh, that we have. So the concept is to have the large vessel and we have an inlet and an outlet. And then the blood can flow through the tube do only I, I hear an echo. Is it only me that's hearing it? Or maybe this because it's open? No? It's OK? OK. Uh, and then if we get the sprout coming from the large tube and connect to the small structure, eventually, if we perfuse through the large tube, it will reach everywhere 
in the tissue. So to, to create these more complex structures, we decided to use bioprinting, and we actually set up the bioprinting center at the Technion. And you can see one of the printer, it's a bioprinter, so the bio ink is, can be a biomaterial, it can be also the different cell types that now we can print, and we can use different heads to print the different cells and to print the biomaterial, to print the scaffold as we uh, really uh, print the, the specific geometry that we want. And here I'm just showing an example of having a large vessel so we can print it and print the, the cells and seed the cells as we print, and uh, we can get as uh, a tissue of interest. So this is... <laughs> so uh, we have the, uh, the, the one printer, and here we can see another printer. Uh, with the different heads, the printer, the robot arm can go and take the different head, and we can see also printing within the support bath to hold the structure uh, as, we, as we print, so you can see more complex uh, vascular tree that is here. So using the bioprinting, we decided to go and engineer this uh, complex structure where we have the large tissue, and also we now print the tissue with the one layer, we have the tissue-specific cells, and we have here cardiomyocyte, in one layer, we have the endothelial cells and the support cells. And by this, we can get the small vessels and the large vessel together. And this is how it looks like. You can see the large vessel. We can see it with endothelial cells. And we can have endothelial cells and the tissue-specific cells in the tissue around it. And now we wanted to see if we can really get a connection, if we can get sprout and connectivity. So we did a cross-section. And we follow it, and, and, and we can see that we have sprout and we can get connectivity, and this was really, really very exciting to see that now if we perfuse something through the large vessel, it will reach everywhere, and you can see microspheres here that are inside uh, the small uh, capillary structure. So now we, can, we have a tissue flap. We can, it can be a large tissue because it's fully perfused, and we can implant it, so we implant it into the artery, and following this uh, uh, amnastomosis, this is really microsurgery in red, so it's not so easy. So right after removing the clamps, you can see that everything gets blood and air, all the tissue is now fully perfused. So we re really were able to engineer a large tissue which is really perfused, and this is in a cross-section. We can really see all the capillary structure, everything is really uh, fed very nicely. But now because we're using bioprinting, we can do more complex uh, vascular structure, which can be patient-specific, and now uh, really print uh, the tissue of interest. And you can see another example of printing more branching vessel networks, so it doesn't need to be only one large tube, but it can be branching uh, structure where everything will be fed. You can see the large vessel and the smaller vessels, everything will be, uh, will be connected, and we can perfuse it, so you can see we connect it here to the uh, uh, pump and everything can be perfused. So it can be perfused in vitro and immediately it will be perfused with blood after uh, implantation. So the concept now can be used to engineer more multi-layered uh, tissue structure and this is thing that we're working on in the lab. And uh, so this is one example where we can use the bioprinting to make this complex structure because with a printer we can now use different cell type, different layers and also embed the vasculature. Another example of uh, tissue engineering using bioprinting is a project that we have with Sheba Hospital uh, to engineer the uricle. And again, we develop a printing technique that allows us to print the very specific uh, design and seeds cartilage cells and then implant it to create this uh, cartilage uh, tissue. And again, the bioprinting allows us to define the specific structure that we want. I want to, and to mention, if we're talking about bioprinting, another technique, it's a paper that just came out uh, two weeks ago. Uh, it's a project that uh, we developed to allow the next generation of uh, 3D bioprinting, which can be in situ, in the body. Uh, and this is using ultrasound mediated polymerization, so we can polymerize uh, the bio ink with ultrasound, which allow us to really get uh, deep into the tissue. And uh, this was a project of uh, Lior in the lab, and you can see that it can allow us for very specific uh, uh, drug delivery, very deep into the body, and also for cell delivery where we can take the cells and using the polymerization in situ to really f to decide where the cells will be and in what shape we want to deliver it directly uh, in the body. 
And we, you can see that using, because it's ultrasound, we can polymerize really through thick tissues. And this is just an example of thick tissue that we were able to polymerize through. And also we can use a focused ultrasound to make defined structures. And now we can really print inside and also make the structure that we want. And uh, we hope that this will give a new tool for um, tissue engineering. So it is discussed uh, uh, for regenerative, how we can use tissue engineering for regenerative medicine, but I want to use a few minutes that I have also how we can, did the translation to the food direction. So the same concept of tissue engineering can be used now for food. You can take cells from the cow, for example, and now the scaffold need to be edible, and we can create a 3D tissue that can be used as food, as steak, if you want. So we uh, derived cells, we differentiate them to muscle cells. You can see the long Maya tubes. And we're able to show that, again, if we mix different cell types together and using the right uh, scaffold, and here we use textured soy protein scaffold, we can create uh, this muscle tissue. The cells can differentiate and form a 3D tissue. This was the work of Tom uh, in the lab. And based on this technology, uh, we founded the Ale Farms. And this, uh, the first product of, of Ale Farm, where you can see the thin cut uh, uh, steak. This is a petite steak, and this is uh, the first product. You can see it also here. And this uh, product received uh, the approval, a regulatory approval from Ministry of Health just uh, not uh, so long ago. So in the lab, we're taking it now to the next generation, maybe the future product, using bioprinting. So for this, we need to develop a bio ink, bio ink, edible bio ink, and you can see here a new development of bio inks where we can print the tissue. We can also make bio ink that are rich with protein. This is also a very recent uh, paper that was published, uh, worked by Shlomit. So we can create a scaffold. We can also develop the bio ink. And we can also introduce to it fat tissue and get marbling of the tissue. And I will just end with this, showing how we can uh, create a, a ribeye steak with combination of muscle cells and fat cells together to create the structure. Again, this can be the future uh, product. So I will end here because we don't have more time. And I want to thank uh, um, the organizer for the invitation and also to thank the group and all the collaborator and the funding agency. Thank you very much.